Hello there and welcome to Vermin Hunters TV with me Cy Pitaway. Today on the show we're going to be looking at a review of the Brocock Contour Super 6, this rifle here. Now a couple of days ago I met up with two friends from the Hunting Life Forum at my house, one called Phil and one called Steve. Steve is the owner of this beautiful rifle here. It's a 177 version of the Brocock Contour Super 6 uh, and on top I've just fitted one of my Hawk Panorama 4-12x40AO IR scopes on. Uh, which complements the rifle quite well. It's got the half mil dot system in. And the reason uh, Steve brought this rifle is because a few members on the Hunting Life Forum would like to see a review of this rifle in comparison to the new BSA Ultra SE and maybe an Air Arms S200. Now I've never shot one of these before and to be honest I was quite sceptical uh, of how it was going to perform. But having actually used it uh, and shot it a few days ago just with one set of pellets which was JSB Exacts at 5 4.52mm, it really impressed me and I was actually hitting uh, targets at 65 yards lazed uh, with the two gentlemen present and some of this footage, what we took the other day, uh, I'll edit somewhere into this review but the reason I'm talking about it now is, we, like I said we only used one set of pellets and after I actually reviewed the footage we'd, we'd taken I actually thought that this rifle can probably do better uh, so today what I'm going to do is put some more pellets through it and test some different brands We've got some Air Arms, uh, some some FX, some JSB Exacts at 4.53 millimeters, uh, and I think we've got some RWS Superfield as well. Right, before we go on to actually uh, try these different pellets, I think we'll talk about the rifle a little bit itself. Uh, now, this main uh, review I'm doing today is not so much about you know how you do this and how you do that, it's more to do with what it can actually do because at the end of the day uh, either as a target shooter or as a hunter you want to make sure that the rifle you buy is capable of doing the job and is accurate uh, so it's going to be more based on accuracy uh, at different ranges and group sizes but we'll, like I say we will cover a little bit about it rifle uh, predominantly comes in a right handed stock, I don't think Brocock do a left handed stock uh, I might might be proved wrong, uh, but from what I've been told, uh, it's mainly a right-handed stock. This one, they do do other versions. Uh, they do a, uh, I think it's called a con concept, uh, and also a uh, specialist, which is I believe ambidextrous. But this one, the Contour Super Six, predominantly comes right-handed. It's a very nice uh, thumb hole stock, and you've got a position for your thumb up or thumb through, depending whichever your style of shooting is. Bolt action, and because it's called Super 6, it's got a 6 sock magazine which I'll show you in a little while. It's bolt action, just like uh, most air rifles are these days, and to fill it, it's just a screw cap on the end, and it's got a push on fill adapter, like so. Uh, the adapter for filling obviously comes when you buy the rifle. This one's it's got an adapter fitted. Uh, and Steve bought the adapter from Brocock, I think he got it from the uh, game fair, one of the game fairs last year sometime, uh, which obviously fits on the barrel uh, and goes up to the one, uh, the half inch UNF. He's got this silencer on here, I'm not sure the make of the silencer, but after testing it, it works very well. And it's up there with the Virax and the Twinks, but like I say, I'm not sure what it is. I'm not even sure if it's Brocock's own model itself, but it's very, very good. There's room underneath and you can see the stud, there's a stud fitted here and a stud fitted here uh, to fit a tilting bipod uh, and this is what Steve's given me to test a nice tilting bipod which will help on uneven ground especially uh, if you're using it for vermin control on rabbits over a warrant. The trigger itself it's absolute joy to shoot this trigger it's got a really nice first stage uh, and then a beautiful let off on the second stage from looking at it, it is adjustable as far as I can see, I haven't played with it, I'm not going to play with it because it's set just nice for me at the moment. What I also like about this rifle, on the back it comes with a butt pad, an adjustable one, a standard. Uh, and I've brought this down now to fit me and it fits my eye line uh, and my cheek really nice, uh, being, in the, being in the lower position like it is. It's very light, <laughs> you could carry this all day, you wouldn't even need to put, uh, put a sling on it. It's ideal for juniors uh, or even... Uh, a lady, a female, if she wants a light rifle, this is ideal. 
there's nothing to it at all and it does actually feel really nice in the shoulder. I was using it the other day to do some standing shooting as well uh, with Phil and Steve uh, and at 27 yards it was hitting 5 pence pieces standing unsupported so it's not a rifle what I'd say because it's light you're wobbling around all over uh, it felt nice. It's got no safety catch. Now I like a safety catch on my rifle. All this has got is a bolt. Uh, no safety catch. So it's a case of don't cock it until you need to and don't load it until you need to. Right, Steve's kindly filled me two of the six shot magazines and to load it just a simple case of pulling back the cocking bolt and putting it in its recess. These are magnetic magazines, which is a really good idea. They just fit in, push forward and that's it loaded. Easy as that. Right, funnily enough, none of us have got a five pence piece on us, which is a shame, but Steve's got a one pence piece. Just before I go up to the 40 metre point, I've just uh, took the actual target card off. Uh, and this is the board, what we've been using before. These are what we just dug out where the ball was, and you can see uh, there's probably two, maybe three pellets there. I think there's two, uh, and maybe two or three pellets there, and there's still some in. And these was actually stacked like that on top of each other. So for an unregulated rifle, uh, that's pretty phenomenal. Right, these are the JSBs we were using the other day. Uh, and this one's got two six shot magazines as you can see here I'm not sure uh, if you get two when you buy the rifle but when this came from Steve it had two with it you see there's like a, a ball here and these are magnetically uh, fixed inside the rifle They're held by magnets in here which I think is a really good idea they could be a little bit small and, and fiddly for some people because they are tiny magazines as you can see they're probably one pence piece size uh, but as long as you, uh, you're careful with them and you, you store them in a decent place, like I just keep them in the tin, I don't think you'll have a problem with them. The only problem you might have is on a cold night if you're wearing gloves and you're trying to load. It would just to be probably a case of taking your glove off uh, to load your rifle and then putting your glove back on. These are the Air Arms Field. And these are at 4.52 mm Uh, looking at that, I think we've got a clear winner so far now. Air Arms Field, 4.52mm, very nice group. Right, I've got the results now of each one of the groups I've shot. Starting off uh, with the JSB exacts at 4.52mm. Uh, and all but one set of pellets, or brand of pellets I should say, I've grouped really well in this rifle so it proves to me it's not a really pellet fussy, fussy barrel so first of all you can see there that's the 4.52 millimeter JSB exacts uh, and that's uh, a small group next was the RWS Superfield uh, and there was five shots and it's just made three holes so that to me is the smallest one so far of them two looking at that. 
side by side. Yep, because there's four holes with the exact and only three holes with the RWS Superfield. Then I went for the JSB exacts at 4.53 millimeter. Still quite a good group and well under five pence piece, uh, but it's just a little bit larger uh, than the other two sets. But them actually do work really well in a BSA Ultra. We then went for the Air Arms Field at, at 4.52 millimeter, uh, and just look at that. That's a tiny one hole group there, and that, that would be covered very easy by probably half the size of a five pence piece. We're going to have a look at that in a second closer up. Uh, and that is a clear winner so far. And the last group was with the FX pellets, which I would say it's three quarters of an inch, which to me at 27.3 yards is not that very good. But I had the same results when I tried these in my HW100 as well. They didn't group very well. So the two best groups we've got here are the Air Arms Field and the RWS Field. What I will do is I'll just show you now uh, the sizes next to a five pence piece in reference uh, and then I think we're going to have a shoot off between these two groups. Right, here's the uh, Air Arms Field group then. Uh, I'll just try and get myself a little pointing stick. Here's where I was aiming the crosshair because obviously it's not zeroed uh, and here's where the group's fallen. You'll notice there's actually a tear in the card there like that. That's actually where a pellet is obviously bounced back uh, and tore the actual card. It's nothing to do with uh, obviously the pellets impacting here. They all landed there. All right, here's a UK five pence piece and if you see, I put it next to it, you can see that group is probably half the size of a five pence piece. Uh, so very very tiny in relation to my small fingernail there you can see the group is smaller than my fingernail as well uh, which is tiny what I'm going to do now though you see where I was aiming and the group I can probably put that five pence piece and it will cover where I was aiming and the group probably move it across a little bit more like so you can see how tiny this group is now to there and it's also almost covered the rip as well so that just goes to show how small that group is now that is pretty phenomenal accuracy uh, I will get a, a new 177 pellet out of the tin here and I'll just place it on the hole there and I'll try and zoom in a little bit for you but you can see it's not that much bigger than the actual 177 pellet itself there's probably uh, two mil that side and maybe two mil that side so that's pretty amazing here's the uh, other group then this is with the RWS Superfield uh, with a pointer again this is where I was aiming you got one, two, three basically shots there in that group and just to show you how small this is put the five pence piece at the side of it you can see again it's probably half the diameter of the five pence piece and if I move that across you can see I can cover the aim point and the all five shots there quite easily Ooh, that's just phenomenal that is phenomenal that's easy accuracy as well that's going to take some beating well here's the uh, first air arms field group then as you saw already uh, and I'm just going to place the second one on here as well which was the shoot off one uh, it's a lot smaller than the uh, one I've just shot with the RWS Superfield you can see I've put them 
uh, hopefully I'll just have to bend this card one second if I put them next to each other the actual second group I shot this one here is probably even a little bit tighter uh, just to show you again there's the five PPs uh, uh, and you can see that is under half the, the size of the five pence piece yet again look, I can cover what I was aiming at uh, and the whole group Right, I've been doing the chronographing now uh, using the air arms field which we find to be the best pellet for the rifle's barrel and I've got the results written down here now on the side of the Brocock contour it says it's a recommended fill pressure of 200 bar the other day when we was using it and just using the FX pump gauge we thought it was around about 185 bar would at the start of the sweet spot actually the chronographs now telling me that from a 180 bar fill it's the start of the sweet spot and from that sweet spot you get 15 very consistent uh, and flat shots with a further five shots if needed uh, which will probably drop according to the results here by four to five feet per second that four to five feet per second uh, is still low enough to keep you within a five pence piece at 27 yards I'm sure but the first 15 will definitely put you within a quarter or a half the size of a five pence piece as you witnessed earlier on when I was zeroing it Right, we're back at the 40 metre point now, so around about 43 yards. And before I go to shoot a group, what I'm going to do is find and adjust the left and right, uh, so the windage for the scope. And the way I'm doing that is I'm going to shoot at a drawing pin, knowing that the pellet uh, will drop, because we're at 40 metres now, not 27, uh, 25 metres. And then I'm going to adjust, if need be, the windage, one or two clicks, uh, and then we'll uh, shoot the group for you. That looks pretty much, looks pretty much on to me, that. Mm -hmm. Let's give it another shot. Oh, I don't know if you can see this, but this is me just practicing, uh, and it's two pellets just up, I would say, near on touching each other. This is under a five pence piece as well, so far. So we can get another one. That's on top of the other one. I think there might be another shot, is it? Yeah. I'll give it one more. But there's three pellets there touching each other. Uh, that one. I'll just try to do this one more. That one went a bit right, but that was me, not the gun. There you go. I think there's four pellets there through the same hole at 40 metres. Zoom out. You zoomed out now, yeah? Yeah, uh, we're going to have a look at this now. There might not be need to actually be shooting another group. Uh, you can see uh, how accurate it is, and we'll go and see now with the one pence again. The target end now, uh, and I've got the one pence piece. There was uh, six shots, I think, I fired there. One of the shots, I know definitely it was me, and it was the one what's furthest to the right, and I actually uh, mentioned that on camera as I did it. So can you just zoom into the uh, thing, Phil, to that target? You on there? Right, as you can see here, there's four shots there in a line. One here, which was a good shot as far as I'm concerned, so it might have been a bad pellet. This one here was the one I called and I definitely knew it went wrong. Uh, but one pence piece, and the one pence piece, look, covers the four and the, and the one there. And if I probably, if I was to bring it over full way, it's only a pellet's width off of being covered uh, with a flyer by a one pence piece. So I'm going to do the same thing again, I'll roughly put the uh, group in the middle if I can. It's going to be hard because this isn't flat because the pellets are actually stuck, stacked on top of each other. Push, uh, and I'll just get my pen because you can't probably see that. But 
just to show you if that will draw around it a bit better. So you know I'm not trying to cheat. This five shots there, and well that's the flyer. That there is well under half the size of a, of a one pence piece. I would say it's probably that group there. I would say it's almost or oh, just a little bit bigger than a third. All right, one third of a one pence piece. So that there, if we had a five pence piece, I know would be covered uh, by by that diameter of the money. Would you not agree? Well, certainly, yes. And as you can see, actually, I've shot it better at 40 meters than I did at 25 meters. There's sight at 40 meters. I'm just going to zoom back so you can see where he is. He's right there at 40 meters. Forty, sh 40 yards, and uh, size so just hit the uh, the penny. Uh, six o'clock low, but it hit it square, fair and square. Size so going to shoot at fifty meters onto the card down there, down range. You can see there, and now uh, we're going to try and print as uh, print as close as possible on ice group. When you're ready, Sai. Nice and uh, vertical. Good. Scopes out, lovely. Oh, almost touching. group for this range on the red rifle. It's pretty consistent inside. Yeah, it's not bad at all is it for that range? Not bad at all. There, I would say they're pretty under an inch, wouldn't you? We'll go down now and have, and have a look, shall yeah, we? Yeah, zoom all the way out. So it's pretty still there. I don't think that's under an inch. Right, this was uh, obviously the group shot at 50 metres, so between 54 and 56 yards, whatever it is. Got the penny again. And all I'm going to do is, I'm just going to put it sort of like centrally. You can see, if I press it now, there's only this one here, and that pellet there, which was the six, one of the six shots, which uh, was a low one, and I knew it was low. I actually said on camera, uh, it was low, bad pellet. But four, or four of the five pellets, the fifth one being there, look, touching the one pence piece, at 54 to 56 yards, unregulated. And I'll just press on again and move it. You can see, look. And actually, there's still a lot of space in the middle of the one pence piece. You know, that's that's not bad at all. I'd, I'd be happy with that, and still uh, be quite happy off the bipod, like I've been doing, shooting rabbits at this range with that rifle. And I know that it's under an inch. That whole group. Especially if four of the five are under a one pence piece. Would you agree with that? Yep. Yeah. Side's going to shoot from 60 uh, metres, 65 yards as a target down here. So I'm just going to pan out and show you where he is. It's a fair old way. Side's going to attempt it at uh, 60 metres, uh, a small yakult. Antibacterial bottle thing, whatever you call it. Ready? Yep. <laughs> well, that seems to have gone through and um, somehow attached itself to the board behind. That's a that's pretty cool. 
They're going to attempt to an even smaller target now. Same distance, 60 meters, 65 yards. They're up there. As you can see, that's uh, Steve and Cy. Up there at uh, 60 meters. And they're going to be shooting down here when I am. I'm quite safe, by the way. That was a bang on shot, shattered it to a thousand pieces. Four and, Four and a half mil dots on a Hulk panorama scope. Right, that's it for uh, today and the test with the Brocock Contour. Uh, and I've got to say, it's impressed me more than I ever thought it would do. As I've already said, it's as good as an Ultra, definitely for accuracy. And it, it could even be better. Uh, we've just got to try a few more different pellets. So, uh, I would not say that an Ultra is any better than this, to be honest. Feels nice, I like the stock. Uh, the actual panorama has complemented it really well to gain the most accuracy out of it. And as you saw, at 25 metres, uh, at 40 metres and at 60 metres, it's uh, proved it's worth in weight in gold, really. And there was a few things we did off camera as well. Uh, the two gentlemen here witnessed it. I had three shots at a piece of stone at 27 yards at the size of a five pence piece standing unsupported with it uh, just to see how it balanced in the shoulder start free standing and every shot i managed to hit the uh, stone uh, we also filmed something didn't we you filmed one didn't you yeah shoot a bit of a tile yeah and that what range was that about right, 60 meters That's 60 meters a tiny tile probably i don't know 10 pence piece size maybe uh, 60 meters is not a problem so this gun for me it's got it all small compact like i like Good for eye shooting, good from a vehicle, very accurate. And to be honest, we've managed to get th about three magazines away out of it. Three magazines, maybe, maybe two shots after as well, but about yeah. 20 shots altogether. About 20 shots. We found out that from a fill of 185, it seems to be the best. Start the sweet spot, uh, drop it down to what, what 120, what? Yeah, 120, 115. To 120, 115, and you get around about 21 shots, very consistent, as you, as you saw. So. And can I just add also, it's a very quiet rifle. Down range you can't hear nothing. Yeah, it is, yeah, it is quiet. So the next things we're going to be doing then is we'll be uh, reviewing the BSA Ultra SE when I pick it up in a few weeks' time. Uh, and if we can get hold of an Air Arms S200, we'll also be uh, reviewing that and doing the exact same thing in this location with the same scope and obviously the same shoot of me on the same magnification. So it'll give it a fair test. Uh, to be honest, I can't see anything better in it. I can see them getting alongside it, but none of them better in that. And, that's pretty good. Uh, it's the first time I've used one of these and it's made my mind up in two weeks time I'll be getting one of these as well. The wife don't know yet so keep that a secret. <laughs>